Welcome to Gem Collectors with Sean. I am Sean, and I hope everybody had a uh, wonderful St. Patty's Day. Um, you know, some go out and uh, eat Irish food. Um, some just um, play Irish for a day. And I know in certain places, like up where um, Miss Barbara is, up in Brooklyn in that area, I mean, they have whole entire areas um, of Irish communities and whatnot. So um, some people can really, um, I guess, uh, play it up and be part of it more than others. I'm actually one fourth Irish, so yes. You thought, well, I was, yep, I'm one fourth Chinese as well. Irish coming from my grandmother, the Chinese coming from my grandfather to my mom, who was born in Shanghai. And um, had to, uh, was very wealthy, very, very wealthy. My grandfather uh, had graduated from uh, Harvard. He was a uh, Naval Time Ambassador from, uh, to the United States. He, um, um, e extremely brilliant man, and ended up owning several city blocks in Shanghai. It was all stripped from him when the communists took over and uh, he was put under house arrest for the ensuing um, 40 years after that. And uh, my mom, at seven years old, came to the United States um, and was poor there on because my Chinese grandfather, as a sign of wealth in China, had concubines then, in other words, other wives. And even though my grandmother was designated number one wife, the Irish Catholic in her was not going to be satisfied with six others behind her. So um, that's when she had divorced him and, and moved to the United States, to Kankakee, Illinois. And um, my mom ended up graduating um, from a private girls' college in St. Louis in Jerome. Now, see how all that start? You never know what you're going to get from me because Sometimes, and I consider myself an introvert, but in my world, amongst rocks and minerals, I guess um, I'm completely the opposite because I'm comfortable. It's all I've ever known since 11 years old is I've lived, eaten, and my passion has never waned. If anything, it's gotten stronger as I've gotten into other areas prospecting, you know, with the tractor. I got to have a tractor I always wanted on the excuse of it being a... Uh, you know, oh, I need it for a prospect. Of course you did. Um, so, um, but I have to almost hold my hands because uh, I'm a, one that talks with my hands and it doesn't always play well if I'm doing this in, in front of my face, in front of you. But you should see me when I'm showing rocks and minerals and I'm just talking and I'm like further back in my chair. I, my hands are moving. I am talking with my hands. My mom. That came from my mom, and she was very dramatic. My mom was um, brilliant, brilliant. Never could speak a word of English in, um, <laughs> up to seven years old. Then, you know, later, she could never speak a word of Chinese. So, um, but being half Chinese, you know, I'm one-fourth, and um, I have, I'm one of six kids, and um, I won't use the exact description, but when some people have seen uh, some of my siblings, especially two of the four, but basically three out of the six, uh, my, my dad was German, so I have German in me also, and, and Welsh. So <laughs> the um, Chinese, and uh, you know, if you did a, uh, plotted a uh, uh, um, hereditary plot and chart, you would find that there'd be a certain percentage out of six children that would have a greater um, heritage look, let's put it that way. And certainly I do. I have a couple of brothers that, you know, we used to say, oh, you're adopted. But it certainly wasn't the case. It was really probably us because my mom, looked, being half Chinese, uh, Oriental, and probably those that didn't so much were the ones that looked adopted. But, um, but they looked that, that, um, Asian. So um, that's, that's a little bit of background. Now, um, 
with six kids, what do you do with them on vacation? Well, in 1972, to family vacation to the Cowie Valley of Franklin, North Carolina. My uncle also owned 200 acre apple farm in the same county between um, staying at the farm every summer and rock hunting and going out to the Cowie Valley and the ruby and sapphires. My heart is in Franklin, North Carolina because guess what? Right up at the top of the mountain and over across, um, right across the county line, I think, is Chunky Gal which of course is a ruby deposit. All throughout those mountains, corundum was being heavily um, mined about 100 years ago because there it was before silicon carbide had been invented as an abrasive. And so they used the most scale, hardest of nine, corundum. And that uh, as a natural abrasive. And actually one of the other words for corundum is emery. You know, the emery board you, uh, that we all become accustomed to for filing our nails? Well, later on they moved also to garnet boards. Just as in sandpaper, you can actually get a sandpaper that says on the back garnet um, because it is the hardest of, of garnet and those materials um, put on the sandpaper just like they did corundum and on an emery board. There was a lot, there's a lot of corundum mines that, uh, boy, I wish I could have gotten in on an original vein of corundum, even if it wasn't of the ruby or sapphire about, you know, type colors. But I can't imagine the crystals um, that would have been pulled out and ground up and, you know, um, what, what it must have looked like because they follow these veins and I've been back in the mines uh, of uh, where they, and how they mined these, uh, these veins of corundum. And they would, you know, it wasn't like alluvial. These were original veins and they were substantial. And um, they'd branch off just like a gold vein would. And uh, so a lot of them are abandoned, of course, or all of them. And they serve their purpose at the time. And, um, but the hills up in that part were really mountains because they get to four to five thousand feet high uh, in that area uh, are dotted with these old corundum mines. And um, when I went with my son up to uh, together when we just went up to Chunky Gal right before Christmas, we ran into an elderly gentleman and he told me of two others. He told me of two others that weren't far away and I know exactly the area he's talking about. So I have those yet to explore and um, uh, because mine, they closed off because permanently to, for, for a study on the bats in there. So um, you just never know when you're not gonna have access to a mine shaft anymore, whether it's already extinct and fun and safe to explore or whether it is a current deposit that's being worked, all kinds of reasons can cause a mine to no longer be uh, producing and known as becomes extinct. The Malad Quarry, the Malad Quarry in what's referred to as the Mumbai district. Mumbai is the name for Bombay now in India. That quarry actually was forced to close due to the encroachment of human settlement and the dangers involved. Uh, of course, with the children and all in a, um, in, in a lower uh, quality neighborhood or what is being built out, you know, more of a um, less, a low income area as they build these settlements is usually what it ends up to be. So you end up with a lot of children and then there's nothing but danger involved with a big quarry wall. I know there's a quarry approaching um, my, um, um, what was my family's property and orchard and um, a, a big quarry. And even as ex <laughs> exploratory as I was, this quarry, uh, when they were operating it, they, uh, hit a spring 
and so much water started pouring into it, they couldn't even get out the equipment. It's always this dark, foreboding place, and it never even tempted any of us, very rambunctious teenagers, to even swim in it. And um, it looks that foreboding. And of course, the story of it all of a sudden filling up and, and, and the miners scrambling out, and they lost a lot of pieces of equipment. Of course, this is back in the 1950s when, when this happened, but uh, um, the, the story lingers. So quarries can be a spooky place and a dangerous place. So yes, the Malad Quarry closed all those specimens, uh, especially, and it's, it's easy to recognize, and especially mineral dealers that know zeolite specimens, what is involved with a specimen from the Malad Quarry. And there's certain things that um, are recognizable to a particular specimen, and it is recognized then to be from that quarry. And one of them are the calcites, the calcite crystals. And that was one of our questions, the trivia questions. So that question was, um, let me get the right paperwork. What is unique about the calcites from the Malad quarry? And the answer, basically, you could either put what the color was or put the color. And um, it is a tan color, and sometimes it's a tan center. But it's always a, uh, and when I say tan, it's more of a brownish tan, like I showed you in the tint of those. Now, fluorescence was a couple of the answers. And even though I showed you another specimen from that quarry where the calcites some were fluorescent, others weren't. And uh, so it's not a uh, given always that the calcites will fluoresce from, from that particular quarry. So, uh, but what the uh, calcites are is that unusual color. And the second uh, question was, name four minerals um, that were uh, on the zeolite cluster. And of course, uh, Harry mentioned, well, that was easy. Uh, they were all listed in the um, description. And of course, they're, they're, they, they were. But um, you got to make it have an easy one every now and again. So that, the answer was quartz, apophyllite, calcite, or still bite. And you could have put pink quartz as well. All right. So those were the questions answered. Let's get to the comments. And we have Miss Gabby starts off greetings, gang. Sean, this is how I imagine your basement. And I have the picture, and I'll see if I can get Asif to, to pull it up later. I had sent it to him, but he was busy and, and stepped out. Um, that's a great picture, Miss Gabby. That's a great picture. It's this guy surrounded by rocks. And um, not too far off from the truth. So hopefully I can show that to you. I love it. I didn't get the jade switch plate because the item number associated with it said amethyst parcel and I didn't want to take a chance getting the wrong thing. Miss Gabby already took care of that. I sent the info to Christy, my inventory specialist, and she has um, sent it to Latrish. So you'll be getting contacted and it has been set aside for you. Um, trivia. Getting both of them right. Apophyllite calcite with unusual color, still bite, and pink quartz. But she's opting out. Hope everyone had a great St. Patty's Day. And my tradition is green beer also. Maiden name Riley. The O was removed by a great, great grandfather. Your Hydro Star Sapphire would be a good one to put on auction if we had that format on this show. Love, Miss Gabby. Miss Gabby, I've often thought of how can we do an auction? You're right. Um, if, if anything, if I, if I don't decide to sell, I'm going to bring it in and show it anyway because it's one of those things that you may never see another one like it. It is stunning when I discovered it. In, in the, the sapphire. And like I said, it's not a small one. It, it's just that the sapphire was kind of included, but
but I didn't really, until I looked at the inclusions, exactly knew what I was looking at. And then it's like, oh my. So, all right, Harry, we're uh, getting here from Harry. Oh my Lord, he says. It just, I just love staying in touch with all you guys. I'm sorry, Professor. I just had to open with my rocking joy. You and the compliments you gave on my work. And yes, and your well-spoken identification and phrasing of the cluttered and non-cluttered crystal formation world. And of course, that being anhydral, being cluttered, and euhedral, nice and sharply defined crystal faces. I only wrote my answers out, but all my notes I took, and I mean that. It's you, Sean, and your teaching. It's effective, and thank you. Okay, that out of the way. Great answers, Harry, and you would have been right on those. Um, because that was part of a trivia contest we had the other week. Hello, Professor, and that beautiful raven. So I think this is a, another message he's sending. Professor and that beautiful raven, and also my dear friends in the rockin' world, and all of them hard work and support folk at GSN, but I have to say this, I do enjoy the compliments you give. But for me and my house, I give all those attaboys to my God, and after it all belongs to him. Oh yes, and you were right about the pinkish color elongated oval pendant in the prong setting. It sure is part of your rhodochrosite. Yes, 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 I still have another one coming from the remainder. It will be a paisley swirl cab. Very cool. And thank you for the wonderful specimens, lastly, that bluestone is, I'm sure, a piece of crystal of some manufacturer's grown item, and my friend wanted a large stone cut. So we had this be uh, beautiful, beautiful, um, well-cut blue stone is the one I said uh, must be a blue topaz but I didn't realize that it was actually a big piece of uh, synthetic that um, uh, for six years he had cut it over six years and anytime he tried he failed miserably but after getting some solid cutting with varying angles as in Cleopatra's eye I decided to try the design again yet with much more self-confidence by um, Arya Akavan derived by John Bailey, December 2014, design called Le Bourget Portuguese Cushion. That said, final weight for him, 437 carats of success. Wow, I could not tell the size of it. So next time, here, you leave something next to it so that I get a um, kind of idea of size reference. That's huge, that's huge, and really well done. Uh, hey gang, it's nice to watch the pre-St. Patrick's Week show with my handy notepad in hand as I watch. And I don't know about anyone else, but checking out all these, those selenite cat's eye spheres. It's amazing how many people like those back there. I loved Sean's comments on identifying amethyst, and I must say I'm one of those that purposefully sidecar well as I can inclusions and zoning. I have had great success submerging my rough in wintergreen oil, and I see it all easily and design my stones like my 64 plus carat custom Portuguese oval of a super deep Siberian color with well hidden zoning. I admit the final uh, stone hides the zoning really extra well, but my amethysts are the real deal. Exactly. And that's why when in identifying amethyst as to whether you have a natural amethyst or not, it could be a very, very clean stone, but if it's any size at all, there will be some type of zoning I have found somewhere in it or some distinguishing characteristics that it's a natural amethyst. But sometimes you have to turn that stone in every imaginable direction, upside down, sideways, diagonally, and backlighting it, and all of a sudden, at a particular angle, bam, you'll see zoning or a little chevron or something and then you know uh, it's it's the real thing but it's real important that you uh, look at it in every different angle and that's why so many times I'll take my flashlight and then just set the stone right on top of the light itself and then just turn the light around as I'm looking and looping it uh, and that often can uh, be very effective in identifying uh, zoning in the amethyst. So um, a good cutter can place the zoning where it is well hidden if he has enough material to work with to where he, they can do that. As you saw in that sapphire that I put up for sale the other week, 
just how important location of color can be in a stone and also how you can hide a lot of uh, imperfections and um, anomalies in a stone by cutting them purposefully to disguise and hide them. And um, that's why that sapphire was just so amazing that that little bit of blue at the base reflected all through the stone and um, if it was bezel set, if, if you couldn't see from the side, it would be really difficult to tell that that is exactly where the entire stone was getting that intense blue color. That's why I used it for a lesson stone for so long. And um, if, I don't know, it might still be available. We'll see. Okay, so um, Harry goes on to say, Wow, that's a lot of silver. I could melt it down and make a bunch of rings. I think he's talking about that big silver uh, candy dish or whatever you want to call it that I had. Um, and then he writes, isn't that a gems, G-E-M-S, you know, that cup I had last week, cat litter storage container that sets nicely in the coaster, LOL, because we were having a lot of fun with uh, um, silver rimmed coasters I was showing. Sean, I have to ask, all the jade items you sell, why not high-end jadeite material? Well, isn't that funny you say that? Because just yesterday when I was doing some inventory, uh, I had a, uh, I have another really neat nephrite piece. Um, I thought about that, and I had a, a piece of, a really cool little piece of uh, nice jadeite. And I just was out of time and had to get the inventory list here to, uh, uh, so that they could enter it into the system. But maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get some of that jadeite out. At least a couple little uh, knickknacks, huh? So a good question, a good question. And remember that Originally, and this is uh, one way that if you really know your jade, you know, your nephrite and jadeite, then you can determine a lot and, and know anything about the carvings. And of course, uh, I grew up, my mom, she had a demi toss set of uh, six cups, six um, demi tosses, half cup is what it means and the spoon that went with them and they were all carved in nephrite. China's original deposits of carving material was nephrite and over 200 years ago those deposits pretty much played out and so they went after the Burmese jadeite deposits to use. Two things, if you get an item, if you're buying a, a fine item, carving, and it's being represented as something that is, say, four or five hundred year old Chinese carved piece. And yet, if you have the knowledge to tell the difference and you see it as jadeite, even though it's jadeite, there's a lot of jadeite that is not of, even as valuable as nephrite. Just because it's jadeite doesn't make it more valuable. But if you see that it's jadeite, then you know the piece is being misrepresented because if it's jadeite, it would have to be no older than 200 years or so. So yeah, there's a fine line in um, when the jadeite was started to be used by the uh, imperial house uh, for carving material. And so um, the other thing is, if there's a piece of jadeite and they, it's um, being represented as, again, making a big deal of the piece being old and um, dating it older than it should be, then question it if it's a piece of nephrite and there, you know, that's where you can find the, the treasure is if it's a piece of nephrite and has all the right hash marks 
and it's um, because it's nephrite hasn't traded at the value that the antiquity part of it should be added. And so if they're just passing it along as something of not very value, you know, value, and a lot of pieces will travel that way and not intentionally. And so it gets passed along and then those in the know that can recognize actual older pieces from style of carving, you can watch also if you know what type of tools and what type of marks are left behind you know whether electricity came along and someone is using a Dremel tool or even a um, foot-powered wheel tool versus much older to where everything was done through a file type of method. Um, so those are the other ways. And you can't polish every place in, in an item. Uh, polishing often can hide those marks, but uh, in these intricate carvings, you can't get into the nooks and crannies, and in those nooks and crannies is where you can spot tooling marks. But that's for a whole no, other lesson another day. But again, um, be wary if you're buying a piece. Uh, the defining line, of course, in age and when it comes to jade, what it should be and what it shouldn't be due to the timeline involved. And so, Harry, I've got a neat little piece I'm going to bring in next week. And when I mean little, I mean little, but it's really neat. It's talk about intricately carved. So everybody, wait for that one. Okay, so, um, Harry goes on to say, um, I got a fully formed morganite crystal pink, but so faint I won't cut it. Boo. No, because it'll look even fainter. Um, Sean, I thought Goshenite comes from Goshen, Massachusetts, and colorless barrel is from everywhere else. Question mark. Um, well, yes and no. Goshen, Massachusetts is where colorless barrel was first discovered and noted as colorless barrel. So they named it Goshenite. And that name carries over uh, to colorless barrel um, across, the, across the, the world, unless it's you know, in an area that just prefers to use colorless barrel. But we don't say green barrel for emerald. We don't say blue barrel for aqua. Um, you know, the only one that doesn't really a color, carry a name it, even though it does, Heliodor, the old original name for Golden Barrel. But so many people now use Golden Barrel because they don't really know what the original color of Heliodor was. And uh, the market doesn't really know what it is. So um, Morganite's well known uh, thanks to TV networks uh, a lot, as is Kunzite. So, yep. And um, some of those places, uh, the the original names for them and and where where they are is um, middle of fields now. You know what might have been a, a, a town at the time something was found or named doesn't always carry over uh, hundreds of years later. Um, okay, so uh, he's got his Goshenite to cut, and then he goes on to say, Sean, the type plate and device that fits on the industry standard called Decora. You must be that jade referring to the jade switch plate. I know a licensed electrician better know what type it is. The calcite from Malad Quarry is pink in fluorescence, um, answering the trivia question there. Um, I wish it was pink in fluorescence. It didn't show that, but um, it certainly is different in its starting color, which is a tannish color or with a uh, dark, uh, kind of a light brownish center sometimes. The four minerals were a giveaway on the item description of Pophilites, Pink Quartz, Calcite, Stillbite. Well, good night, my friends at GSN. Mr. Harry. Cindy in Pennsylvania, top of the morning to you, Rock family. A great show, yes. Bring in those oddities and included gems to show us. All right, okay, enough of you want to, to see my and Hydro Sapphire, I will. Um, can't wait to see some of them. Okay, and some of the others, maybe, too. Um, Trivia, yellow fluorescence. I did mention yellow fluorescence about regarding a Malad quarry specimen. It was that open piece 
uh, that I had recently showed there was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, really a, could be museum quality because it certainly had everything going for it for the Malak Quarry piece. Um, and I talked about uh, some of those calcites fluoresced yellow, but as a general rule, calcites from the Malak Quarry um, don't always fluoresce. Uh, but that's what made those a little bit actually unusual on that one particular specimen. Um, and then Miss Cindy gets the second question, all of the minerals right. See you next week, Cindy in South Central Pennsylvania. Going to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers Thursday night. <laughs> Bagpipes, oh yeah. Great show, that'll be a great show, enjoy. Mr. Jimbo in Delaware now. Hello, Sean and fellow rockers, happy St. Patty's Day. Again, I did drink a few green beers. Uh -huh. <laughs> At least you're fessed up. I will answer trivia questions. Tannish color on the calcite. Well done. Apophyllite, stillbite, pink quartz, and fluorescent calcite. Calcite, or just calcite will accept, even though it wasn't um, necessarily always fluorescent. That one specimen they did, uh, the other, uh, um, it, it, not always though, but on that one particular specimen, some of them did, but those other whiter calcites, uh, didn't, but the more um, constant is the fact that they are uh, and tend to be a tannish color or a tannish center on that. Uh, my closing, as we go about our walk of life, keep your eyes to the ground. Who knows what's to be found? Blessings to all. Jimbo in Delaware. Thank you there, Jimbo. Miss Elisa in Florida says, hello, Professor, the lovely Raven, GSN crew and rock family. Professor, what a great show. I really appreciated the information you provided about zoning and inclusions when looking at a, a gemstone. That was exactly what I needed to hear. Harry, I hope you continue to get better. My answers for the trivia are the tannish color, well done. Calcite quartz, apophyllite, and stillbite, well done there as well. My favorite item was the parcel of Indian star rubies. Take care, everyone, Miss Elisa. Yes, that Indian parcel of Indian star rubies, uh, seldom can anyone put together something that looks like that or has a parcel like that. And so I thought I would do it and just make it a really good deal so that uh, maybe someone would take advantage of it because it was certainly a really good deal. Miss Barbara in Brooklyn says, hi, Professor Sean, Raven, GSN crew, and the whole Rock family. I agree that people get talked into overspending on diamond grades, absolutely. If VS2 or SI1 are I clean, why spend for higher grades? Even your nosiest girlfriend won't pull out a loop to eyeball your ring. No, if she did, she would be so crass, and that would be, so, <laughs> she shouldn't be your girlfriend. Um, pay up for whiteness. Exactly, the human eye can see color, but it can't see those tiny little inclusions, um, but not higher than GH or I. Boy, Miss Barbara, you must have taken a class, correct, because the DEF colors, those are kind of considered more the investment grade colors. And unless you keep a diamond perfectly clean, which nobody does, one time with hand lotion, one washing of soap film, anything like that will instantly dry and leave a coating on the back of a diamond. I don't always recommend taking them off, though, to wash your hands because then you set them down in a place that might, um, you might regret if you get in a good habit of always having a particular spot to set it in. When you do that, then that's okay. But you have to be really um, well disciplined to do that because I have heard of, oh, I wrapped it up in a Kleenex. Oh, that's never, never put any, wrap up a, any jewelry in a Kleenex. The stories, remember I had two retail jewelry stores for many, many years. The stories I could tell you about how many rings were thrown away, wrapped up in a Kleenex. Rather them go down the sink because that's the other way that lady's doing them. I took it off my hand to wash my hand and it slipped out of my fingers and went right down the drain. 
those kind of stores because you can get into the elbow of the sink. Yeah, it might be very inconvenient <laughs> and a pain, but it can be recovered. Once you throw something away and it goes down the road, that's it. Mm, can't be recovered. So uh, it takes discipline to take off your ring. So what ends up happening is that buildup and of any type of film on the backward diamond. Okay, so your diamond is designed to still be sparkly. Now a CZ, the, the big difference is if you have a cubic zirconia and it gets any dirt on the back, it completely shuts down the um, brilliance of it and the uh, scintillation, but not a diamond. So a diamond will still be brilliant. But what it does do is it alters any advantage you have to paying that ultra um, premium for a DEF color. Again, because it will uh, detract and make the color less than those super white colors. Almost anything, of course, is not going to be as white or make it whiter. No, it's going to make it less than. So, um, like I said, the human eye can see color. It can't see inclusions. And no one keeps their ring clean enough to warrant those investment grade that you pay a huge premium for, unless you went around saying, oh, this is a D color or D flawless or D VVS or whatever. We can't do that, right? So Miss Barbara is correct on both of those. Um, or size, not too big that it seems fake. Absolutely. I've, but back in the day, here's going to become the other issue. A big diamond is not going to impress anybody anymore because you can get five carat diamonds at the minimum. I know I've sold them was for, a, you know, again, the kind of diamond um, Barbara and I are mentioning talk about not even the high end, but you know, a nice um, above middle of the road diamond, $50,000 for an earth mined diamond. Now you can get a really fine high color, high clarity, lab grown diamond for less than $5,000. The latest price I've seen is $3,500 and falling. What does that do? That minimizes the impress factor that a big diamond has on your hand anymore. What would be more impressive is a beautiful, intricate, custom-made piece of jewelry, something that takes talent and skill to make, not, or gemstone, you know, a fine, unusual, unique gemstone. Big diamonds, unless you go around saying, and this isn't lab-grown. This is, you know, you, you would have, any more people are going to have to state that it's earth mind to get any kind of wow factor out of it, any in any way, shape, or form. Because uh, they're growing lab-grown diamonds like they're making salt. And, um, yeah, price is just going to go one direction. It can only go in one direction. Um, all right, let's see. So Miss Elisa getting the answers right. Barbara goes on to say, a clever hack is forget the diamond and go for a moissanite. Almost as hard and durable for everyday wear. Gorgeous dispersion and much cheaper. Save the green for a house down payment instead. That's exactly right. That's what uh, my son's mom and I, we skipped a big wedding and her parents gave us the down payment for our home instead. Now, this was a long time ago, so you know, it didn't take a lot of money for down payment. And we were so happy about that, much more happier. And what, in the end, we would have wound up divorced anyway. So, you know, what would the wedding, fancy wedding and all, where does that get you, you know? It doesn't keep you, anyway, don't get me started on that. But um, you know what, again, instead of a moist knot, you can get a genuine stone. Get a genuine, you know, get, a, get a beautiful, genuine, natural color white zircon or something special uh, in, in a gemstone. Um, you certainly would have something much more rare. And uh, yeah. All right. Happy to see your thoughtful packaging got matched treasures successfully through the Postal Service. 
in a documentary, they mentioned that they routinely scanned for that kind of stuff. Would have hated to see the postal police swarm GSN's door. Phew. It wasn't GSN's door. <laughs> well, it would have been my door. But, and I, know, and I already knew about that. I already knew, of course, that they have that kind of scanning going on. And that's why it, I put it in those Thuya Wood boxes. And I got the CPM down to less than, um, than many common other products that are shipped. Everything from fossils to, um, um, I'm, I'm thinking of all, all, the, all the other things that I don't really want to say because I don't want to spook people. So let's not, <laughs> I won't go there. But to a fifth of what a very common gemstone that is sold all the time and you hear about it all the time. And it, the CPM counts per minute was, is a, was through the Celia Wood box a fifth of what that was. So yeah, we were, we were good there. But I did think about that, Ms. Barber. As to the trivia, the Malad calcite is tan and fluoresces. Four minerals in the zeolite cluster were apophyllite quartz, calcite, and stillbite. Hope nobody had to drink green beer, ick, and that everybody enjoyed being Irish for a day. Start your countdown to the April 8th eclipse. Take care. Oh, Miss Barber from Brooklyn, did anybody watch? And of course, I know it's days later, the, uh, but I wa <laughs> couldn't leave the house until I saw the um, Mars, future Mars rocket blast off um, for, uh, SpaceX. And um, wow, that was impressive. And everything went so well. And then they lost communication with it. So maybe it's going lost in space somewhere. Hadn't heard the latest because I had to come in here. But wow, yeah, nope. Um, both the Raven and I are big um, astrology kind of space people also. So she has the um, a um, app that tells her when all the eclipse things are coming up. And you can point it at a particular part of the sky. And it tells you what stars are, are they are that you see. And uh, those kind of things. which. Um, so yeah, we, we love um, meteor showers, of course. Of course we would love meteor showers. And I've always wanted to follow one when I see it hit the ground. Of course, all the movies I see when they do that, you know, some kind of alien event usually happens after that. Something usually not very good. So um, yeah, so anyway, okay. So since so many people did actually put fluorescent calcite in there and I may have mentioned the fluorescent part uh, in reference to um, the other one as well being fluorescent. I haven't seen where it's strong fluorescence in them, but um, either way, I am going to credit uh, everybody for uh, if you use the word fluorescence. So therefore, pulling the, uh, adding that, all those to the correct answer list makes the winner Jimbo. Let's show Jimbo what he has won. Jimbo in Delaware, check this out. Now, of course, oh, looks like um, caramel candy. I'm not, not really sure. No, it, what it looks like is something that you will treasure because this, it, these are from an extinct mine. And even though there are some crumbs to it, it actually, what you look at that, you can see because of that, that reflection, see all those? That's the real deal. Because the, the, this is the Japanese iridescent rainbow garnet. And there's one nice larger piece. Look at that. And it, wow, look at all those colors reflecting every which way. And then with all these other ones, as well. Look at that. And then, ooh. So, this is a collection of little crystalline pieces. And um, it would make actually, um, in, a, in a, one of those little uh, uh, Zen gardens, a neat little area to use the little crystal or as Raven calls them, the crumbs. But there, there's, there's a really actually nice termination of one there with three faces of very exuberant colors and then a cluster to go with it. So 
that has been closed. Uh, I don't anticipate it will ever open back up. The um, after the, what the Rockhounds uh, did last time, they ended up imprisoning them from the Tenkawa village. The elders were not impressed with the Rockhounds all of a sudden, um, can you imagine overrunning the hillside there where the magnetite mine is? And I kind of bl don't blame them, but it, that's kind of like a gold rush, especially something unique and as rare as what you see. That would absolutely cause me to go see if I could get my fair share, right? <laughs> okay, let me put those away and we'll be back to, with the star of the show. Only have this one set of two strands, of course, uh, two strands, I do it that way because they're 14 inches each. So that way you can either have one 28 inch strand or you can make it whatever length you want and have a uh, leftover bracelet, like let's say a 21 inch necklace and a seven inch bracelet, that kind of thing. Or, you know, you can add other beads in between, but you have to have the options by having enough to start with to match because if there's not enough, you know, for you to go out and try to find a match to the original strand, believe me, it is mm, nigh impossible. So check this out. The only two strands I had, I am offering them together and these are faceted, albeit kind of um, roughly faceted, but it's the blue moonstone. And they, as you can see, are not bashful in that incredible, um, well, for the name Moonstone, reflective play of color. Look, look at that, look at that. And so, wow. Um, I see some actually may have some yellow, but no matter what, at any point, there is blue reflecting from somewhere. And uh, um, it's a feldspar, so you have a hardness of six, so plenty hard enough. And with also having enough to work with, you can high grade them if you want. So take out ones that maybe don't sparkle the way you like or are thinner or thicker than you know, others, there is um, many things you can do. You can twist them like that. You can always add other beads to the end so that you have a portion that twists in the front. I just kind of tied them off so that they would hang on uh, the neck. But you can see that um, they're all close and matched. They don't really graduate in size, which is good. That way it doesn't, uh, corner you into having to string them a certain way. And um, see, I see there, there's a little yellow there. I just told Dave that um, I'm kind of sneaking these in because uh, Raven had wanted them, but she wants everything and she has so much already. And I thought, no, 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 I'm offering to my people. My people come first before her massive, massive jewelry collection. We think we have rocks. Oh, also, there was a picture I sent you. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned it in my opening. Yeah, that you'll, you're gonna love it. So if you don't mind when you have it, could, uh, let me know so we can show it. I told him if you were um, in a good mood, then you would uh, <laughs> download it and, and we'd get to see it. Miss Gabby sent it. She said, this is how I picture your basement. And Miss Gabby, it's not just our basement. That's our main floor. <laughs> that's how our main floor looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's a great pick. So thanks, let me know. Okay, so both of these necklaces only have the one, not gonna have any others. And I have a, a great opportunity on these. Moonstone, by the way, has really gone up in price. Remember, it's a, a um, one of the original June birth month stones. So a June birth stone. So for those of us that can't afford Alexandrite in June, then you certainly can these because both of them are going to be only $58. Only $58. So. If you haven't priced Moonstone lately, then you, you need to because especially the blue Moonstone, um, I saw we have paid for these and we have had them at least, this was gonna be another project, right? Ten, I've had them at least 10 years 
at least 10 years. And so, you know, she didn't even know we had them. It's when I rediscovered them, then she wants to lay claim to them. And, um, and she does that all the time. So um, many things she has laid claim to 10 years ago, I just decided, it's like, you know, to sell it because, she, yeah. But she's a great um, one to, um, she knows how to spot the good stuff. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. So, uh, okay, excellent opportunity. Item 116-7424 coming up. Now, this next item, I remember when I first went and bought a flat of these. Uh, well, the very first time I had to pass it up. I couldn't believe how expensive it was. I found, uh, okay, he's got the picture ready. This is what Miss Gabby said, the way she pictures my, um, our basement. And I said, basement? No, that's our main floor. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, isn't that awesome? Look at that, I look see, at that. I see ladies you know, you know when, when I, I, I showed this to Ray, Raven this morning when I came in, and she goes, oh, I would kill to live like that. And I, I, I told her, I said, well, we're not too far away from it, baby, but we do have at least a floor we can walk on. At, at this point, why the cabinets and the sink? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you about one sink in our bathroom. If I did, you, you're going to think we're psycho. Or, or, the, or, or I just can't tell you, you guys are going to think we're thinking. And that's why we really don't have, can't have company to our house, because they would walk away thinking we need to be committed. But it is our castle, and it's the way we like it. We walk into our door, and we get this sense of energy and peace, awesome, that it's like walking into, a, I guess, a monastery. Or when I walked into the, the onto the Buddhist um, grounds of, of a um, uh, in Thailand, and all of a sudden there was this entire peace that came over me, and I couldn't leave. I just sat actually in this chair. The wind was blowing. The bamboo chimes you could hear in, in the distance. You could smell the temple incense, and it, it, I still, when I smell temple incense to this day, I instantly take takes me back to that uh, to that time I had in the monastery. I ended up uh, sitting there for like three hours as, as you know, the uh, saffron-robed uh, monks, they'd walk by, never would speak, of course, and, and uh, it was very peaceful. But this, this, I love this. This guy, he's my hero. He's my hero. Okay, give you a quick shot of the Moonstone again. All right, now. I just admire it. Looks like David's pop <laughs> it is, yeah, does. Oh my gosh, you're right. Uh, he he is like I am though. He he is very much like that though. That's funny. A couple of dead bodies there too. <laughs> and a dog. I could say so much <laughs> word. Oh my gosh, the dog. Oh oh, I forgot about that. Oh awesome. Oh my gosh. Right. Oh my gosh. That's on the stove actually. Oh my gosh. In that kitchen. Oh my gosh. No. I totally forgot about that. No. Oh, I don't know if they heard the word you said, but I don't dare repeat it because then it'll bring back their memories. Oh, if they watch that show, it'll bring back their memories. Poor Miss Gabby, I know she will remember. Okay, look at this. Take a look at this. So when I um, bought, had a chance to buy this second time around, I went ahead and bought a flat. It, 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 uh, it was at a price point. I said, oh, well, I gotta have it because nowhere else has this yellow. Yellow lapidolite been found. You know, lapidolite is a lithium mica and it's associated with the lavender and purple colors, uh, but lapidolite yellow? And you can see, look at this, it has absolute, that classic mica reflection. And so um, as a phyllosilicate now, phyllosilicate, phyllo, um, meaning uh, basically, Silicates that flake, that have uh, flaky layers, and you can see that um, right there in that. And you look at the translucency to those as well uh, in, in these pieces. Really nice. And then here you have quartz associated with it. 
and then the back, more of the same. Just a really nice size specimen. In, I could not believe how much this material is going for. So I have this, it's from uh, Intinga, as you can see. I have this really well priced uh, for the quality of the specimen that it is. And that is important because there is the lower grade of this yellow lapidolite that you do not have these, these are basically crystals, okay? They're like a, as if they were quartz crystals sticking up. This is the way you find a cluster of um, well-placed mica lapidolite uh, crystals and, and how they look. And then when you see the translucency, well, it's also just as there is in muscovite, low-grade muscovite mica, there's low-grade lapidolite, yellow lapidolite mica as well. This is not the low-grade material. This is the good stuff. Because I got in on it early and... Um, the later material now, they're just digging uh, whatever they can. And um, it's, it's not, not anything. So don't fall for the, uh, that kind of material. Only $78 on this. Only $78. And that will get you, um, you know, what they call a small cabinet size specimen. And so right side of your... Uh Kitchen floor. <laughs> Order of the way, do the thing. <laughs> there you go. There can be the yeah. specimen, just, just the exact one you want to the right of your kitchen sink, or, you know, right. Right, right, right. Where there you go. Right at the I, I see there. a spot. You're right. There's us. Right, right behind where he's sitting. <laughs> there's that empty spot. There is an empty spot right behind where he's sitting. I see that. That would stand out well and be noticeable by everyone. Right there. <laughs> honestly, if you only knew, Kim's and my response when we saw that this morning, for, for, for honest to goodness sake, I mean, we would absolutely love to live like that. Put that stuff right at the bottom. Oh, there he goes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, look at him go. Come down, Come down. Down, down. Oh, oh, that is amazing. That is amazing that you can do that. How do you even do that? How do you even do that? I've never seen you do that before. The ghost crystal. Oh, that was a riot. That is a riot. They're going to be talking about you. Uh, only here, right here on the Gem Collector Show with Sean. You will not, you will not find that anywhere else. On. She does. She does. See, Miss Gabby found that, and Miss Gabby, who is a astute collector, um, just knew that that is how we roll. And um, how much we roll? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what we. I said. I, I, I said to Kim, I said, "How does he get to his chair without stepping on a rock?" She goes, "Well, you can't dare step on a rock, you know." So. Um, yeah, that, that, that picture is made, made for me. I, I, I need to uh, blow that up and frame it. That is made for me. It just needs to look more like me. So Dave, who is a master at, um, at uh, making these funny pictures of me while I'm on air and uh, showing them to me as I'm supposed to keep a straight face. Hey, speaking of, oh my, you should have seen many, many, many years ago what they used to do to me as the newbie. Uh, on the overnight show, they would stand, and I'm, while I'm doing my little monologue, they would stand in front of me in where the camera is so I couldn't miss them, and they would make funny faces. They, they would do all these kind of things to throw off, throw off the host. I don't think they did it to anyone else but, but me because it was the overnight and overnight, and we had the fun show. We had the show that uh, it was okay to not be serious all the time, just as we are right here, right now. And I think, um, you know what? I think everyone pays a little bit better attention if they know, never know when the next moment of clownery is going to happen. Let's look at the next item. What in the world is, okay. Ooh, well that makes noise, hold on, this one. Let's look at item 116-8124. Now, Miss Gabby or anyone else 
this is something you have to have because it's something you don't have. That's why you have to have it. And it is one of a kind because I don't think I've sold another one. Yep, you gotta keep going up. What is it? Up. Firecracker. <laughs> exactly. It can hold a firecracker. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Now, you know, okay, <laughs> Asif, I know what all of you are thinking because it's a clip, okay? I already know, okay, they're giving away their generation. Um, but from my generation, we were mature and responsible. So we only put things like gemstones on there or something. What? <laughs> you know, I know, I know. You know it, what it is? It's a note holder. It's a note holder. It's a message holder. What? A love note holder for your spouse. Yes. Yes. It's a love note holder. You leave every day a love note there for your spouse. Uh huh. That's what it is. It says right here, love note holder. Don't you see it? Jeez, if I, if I said that to, to Kim, she would say, okay, I want to see one every day. It better not be the same one. And yeah, she would never let me sell it. She said, okay, that's perfect. You, you, you're, 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 that's the fucking perfect road clip right there, man. It, ah, okay, you, you said it. I know, I know. I know. You know what? I did not even think of that until the... the, the, the oh, that's why I said the clip. The moment I said it out there just now, also was the first time it dawned on me. It's like, wow, I know what that is now. You know, because here's how you hold it right here. Hey, hey, hey. We're on TV. Oh, oh, that's right. We're, We're on. We're the people in Denver. <laughs> right, right. We're in Denver. Denver and California. This is a uh, perfect product. And 40 other states. <laughs> that's, correct. Correct. Um, you know, this is use it as you see the need. For it, everything from a love note to a I'm seeing an attorney this afternoon note. The thing about it is, um, this is heavy. This is a lot of British Columbian jade, and I actually hadn't seen one of these in a long time. I had gotten this a long time ago and didn't use it for anything. No love notes, I guess. So, um, but. Since Miss Gabby is building out this amazing bathroom with a uh, nephrite toilet paper holder with nephrite towel holders, and now this could what could that hold in the bathroom? Hmm, your tooth, your toothbrush <laughs> to remind the other person to brush their teeth. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You're tr trying to get me to say it. Well, you put all your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You guys probably will turn your volume up and listen in quietly. You'll turn, that, turn off the air conditioner in your house and, and you'll listen to exactly what here, was said. Here's the snow lover. Oh my, this is like the 3 a.m. show all over again. I mean, you think this guy is That is, that is the definition of a stoner. <laughs> that guy, look at, what, what other name form could it be? Oh my God, that is it is. That is, I don't, I didn't know there was a definition of any other than yeah, that for stoner. Actual, like, legal definition. Uh, completely. Right? Somebody right. that lives, eats, and breathes stone. Stoner. Look it up. Webster's. Look it up. Yep. I tell you. Man after my own heart. Yes. I'm glad we're speaking to a mostly 60s, uh, 60s audience. That guy probably doesn't have this. <laughs> See? He can have one over on him. He doesn't have this. No, he doesn't. He does not have one of these. And anybody, all of you, there's only one of them. And it's right here before your very eyes. And I'm looking at the little pit of light price. Um, here you go. Price. This is crazy. And I actually made it disc, double discount on it. Um, I don't know why. Because uh, it's going to wind up. 
going to the person that it suits best. So <laughs> that's right, $44, only $44. Did you notice that it had the felt pad base even? So it's not gonna scratch up your bathroom counter. It is um, kitchen counter, those granite countertops. No, because you know what? Jade, you know, granite countertops, fine if it's all quartz, but it's not. They are, um, tend to have softer stones in them as well. So you, um, Oh, and especially those of you with m any type of marble, you can easily scratch marble up with something like that. But with that felt base, nope, you that is uh, completely protected. And that wire is well mounted. So, um, and you, you saw how flexible it was. So it, you can uh, do a lot with it. And again, here's, it's the kind of item, you know, where you think, giving someone to a rock hound or a friend that they might have all kinds of things. Maybe you think there's some, not something you can buy for them that they don't have. This is one of those gifts they're not gonna have. Even if they're a rock hound or if they're just someone difficult to buy for because who else is gonna have a nephrite love note holder? Or however else you want to perceive it to be, it is truly one of a kind. As far as, uh, I'm sure there's others made, but a one-of-a-kind gift idea you're not gonna find down at your local little curio shop. Okay, now, let's see. Let's get to, okay, okay, here we go. Now, now we're rocking. Let's look at item 116-7624. 116-7624, and we are going to um, completely go to something different. Look at this. Look at this. I have not sold one of these in this show, in the Gem Collector Show. Yeah, all the gems I sold and offered, I have not sold one of these. This is incredible. Okay, I'll just show you because you get the suspension case as well. We're going to take it out. We're going to take it out. This is a beauty, and it's been in my collection um, for me just to enjoy. So we're going to show you this <clears throat> rarity because the yellow colors in tourmaline are rare and even though uh, this one is from Brazil they're also um, have been found in Nigeria uh, Mozambique uh, some other scattered deposits here and there now let's talk about this a little bit this is a tourmaline that I checked myself. I said, okay, if it is in this color range, then I want to do a little test. So let's see if it reacts at all to a magnet. Now, this is my neodymium N52. And boom, look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? Let's do that one more time. As I get this closer, now it has to get, normally a garnet by now, an, an iron garnet would be zinging across that glass. Boom. Now, the funny thing I also noticed, well, I'll show you that in another stone, not in this one, I won't mention it in a moment, but that there, were, there was actually some, um, a stronger draw on one side than the other. In this one, let's see. Yeah, see that? So remember, uh, tourmaline is piezoelectric. In other words, um, under pressure, it can be electrically charged. If something's electrically charged, there's usually gonna be a positive and negative charge to it. So um, it would make sense that in 
a certain direction, you would get a certain um, magnetic response different than other directions. Let me just try the other end of this out of curiosity. Look at that. That didn't even come close to it, and it started to turn it. So um, there's an electrical charge, but of course we know tourmaline does that. But it is magnetic. Why? Well, look at the color. What other tourmalines have we seen before that haven't been that pretty of a color, but are kind of approaching that color range? How about those amazing dravites crystals? Those big crystals, when I would backlight them, you would see that kind of coffee, yellow, brownish color? Right. There's your clue. Now, there is a lot, many different tourmalines that you may not realize actually will have a shoral or a dravite connection. In other words, just like the garnet families will intermingle, so to speak, like the Malaya garnet is a combination of a couple of different garnets. And like the rhodolite is a combination of pyrope and almondine garnet. Uh, well, that can happen with tourmaline as well. So you can get a mix of other elements, and tourmaline is one of the most complicated gems, well, it is uh, the most complicated gemstone there is when it comes to a chemical formula and the many variations thereof, um, and it still be classified as a tourmaline. Now, we know that in dravite and in shoral, th what makes uh, shoral a dark tourmaline like that is iron. And dravite, iron. This, I don't know what the rest of the um, golden tourmalines are exactly, but in doing my little home test, and I only had a tiny N52, not my big fancy one I used. I keep one, uh, and, and it was able, I had to do it multiple times, and I had to do it on a um, slick downward slope. Uh, it was actually the angle of my computer was at at the time, and it's a kind of a real slick surface, my laptop, and so with that, it was kind of like floating a stone. If you ever wonder if there's any magnetic pull at all, here's the best thing you can do to assess that. Take um, just something simple, like the top of a gem tube, just the top of a gem tube, as long as it can support the weight of a gemstone. Put the gemstone in the middle of the top and float it on water, let the water settle, and then Put your magnet towards it. What you're doing is you're completely reducing all the friction and drag that the stone would normally feel and normally have to fight against if it was sitting on whatever you would normally put it on to test the magnetism. Once you remove the drag factor by floating it on water, then you can measure magnetism to the minutest amount of response. In other words, the smallest amount of manganese or iron will cause it to be able to be pulled across the surface of the water with your magnet. And that is a um, really great tip that I can pass on to all of you because magnetism in gemstones is the secret method of assisting identification in gemstones. Even many, many gemologists are not aware or don't use, they may have read an article, but they don't use it or apply or build a um, reference table for the information that they can get from doing 
the experiments themselves with magnets. I mean, you know me, I've been talking about magnets and gem identification for a long time. So I'm just adding to that knowledge because that's my secret weapon to measure the really minute amounts of magnetism. Okay, so there you saw it. You see it right here. And that is a, look at that, as I can just pull it right across the table. Not enough where I can pick it up like an almondine garnet, but certainly enough that it tells me that there's a iron component within it and due to the color, I know it's iron and not manganese. So there you have it. This is a beautiful stone, a beautiful, beautiful stone. I did even polish up the girdle a little bit. I cleaned up the girdle more than it was, even though it hasn't um, been worn. The stone has not ever been in jewelry. It has been in my collection. <laughs> okay. so. It comes with a suspension box and a price of only a lot less than it should be because it's one of those really rarities. I, uh, I was looking at the pricing, it's like, oh my, what much more than I'm asking? Only $78 on this guy. Only $78. Now, let me show you. I've got another one I'm gonna set up for in a moment, so I'll be right back. One more for you. This is the only other one I have, um, again, Beautiful golden yellow tourmaline. And it's very well cut, even though I didn't cut it myself, but you can see it's not a native cut. This is a well cut gem, very clean stone, and a really beautiful color. Again, really, really beautiful color. Um, so let me show you. Let's look at this in a couple of ways. Let me look, I was just looking to see how Playcroic it might be. Um, all right, now let me turn that off. I was just experimenting and what I was, did was I tried different directions since it was a trillion. Okay, you can see how that pulled it towards it and um, I'm just playing for a moment here. And then I tried it from a, another side and got a weaker response. And then the third side that was a stronger response. So again, direction of the crystal in the end, um, I think has uh, something to do with the magnetism of it and that um, with a crystal that can be electrically charged kind of can make sense. I don't know beyond that, but I knew and know that it is magnetic and to enough degree that it is easily measurable. So that if I was trying to confirm whether that was, let's say, a citrine or let's say a corner of pine or some other um, mineral in, or gemstone in that color range, by being magnetic, it would, you know, and if you have a good general working knowledge of gemstones, then um, you could rule out a lot of items and then rule in other items. You could certainly rule out citrine because remember, citrine is going to have close to the same hardness, um, not too much difference in refractive index, especially depending on the type tourmaline. And you may not have a very expensive <laughs> refractometer. I've got four of them, I think. And I, I'm thinking about selling off some of those items. I just don't know the, the best way to, to do it. They'd all be at a good deal. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it um, 
I actually have done the polishing of the hemispheres here for the uh, many gemologists that uh, Gem Shopping has and has had over the many years. And the hemisphere, even though it shouldn't, because mine has never gotten a single scratch over 30 year plus years of use, Somehow, I think other, maybe it's a learning process, but other ones um, get an incredible amount of scratches on the hemisphere. That's the part that you place the stone on. So they need to be polished. And there's only so many <laughs> polishing lives they have. They only raise above the metal so much. And then, of course, you can have them replaced by uh, GIA, but that is very expensive. So Sean's polishing service has worked for many, many, many years, and maybe that's what I should put an ad out for, to just polish uh, people's refractometers, uh, refractometers, their hemispheres, because um, I find there's a obvious big use for that, and there's so much money that they charge, I can do it for a third to a half the cost. Anyway, I'm thinking about my next job when I'm retired and am a grizzled old miner that can't get down in the creek anymore um, of a way to make a living. Yep, these things, my brain's just a turning away. Anyway, how about this? I got this as a great deal, $54. $54 and um, wow, you know, you get the magnetic lesson along with it. That is a bargain. Okay, now, let me show you something that is, again, really unique, really different, going to be a project, <laughs> and, well, I have lots of those, as you see, over the years, and, uh, I don't know, now up to like 4,500 items sold, and um, still, I look like that picture of the guy at the bench in the house. Yeah, yep. And I'm not so sure, actually, some parts of you know, that are mine versus what are Raven's. I think she's worse. You should see her nightstand and all of her little crumb jars all around the house and her kitchen. And if I dare move one little piece, she knows it. I, um, yeah, she knows it. I was going to tell you another story, but I better not. <laughs> I got, oh, it reminds me. Of, okay, wait till you see this next item. It is item. <laughs> yeah. Need to get those glasses uh, before or after the teeth. Hmm. 116-8724. All right, this is not something that you normally are going to see. Uh, I am going to show them to you. Look at this. Look at this. In the suspension box that you get with them. Wow. Here's a rarity. Here is a rarity, especially these are not the same crystal. They're not from the same crystal, but honest to goodness, I have no idea how I, I, I guess I picked and saved them. I had gotten some of these a long time ago. Um, And I guess maybe I kept two that were exactly the same length. That was what's so weird about these, is that uh, the length of them. They match so well. Now, I'm going to let them sit there and spin, Dave. I'll get them there in the middle just one second. OK. See, if I don't put them in the middle of the turntable. Oh, OK. That's cool. Then Dave usually has to chase them with the camera. So, OK. Now. Look at the clarity. Epidote. These are epidote crystals. Now, you're familiar with epidote. We just talked about epidote the other day when we talked about epidote and pink feldspar. Make what? Say it to yourself at home or out loud. What make? What is the name of the uh, semi-precious gem that is epidote and pink feldspar? Named after a set of mountains in Virginia. That would be Unikite, named after the Unica Mountains, one of the uh, first places it was uh, discovered. Unikite. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I had not thought about that one. Um, he uh, blessed me for sneezing. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, you can see that these are like facet grade. Though most of the time, when other times you've seen epidote, it has been little fine needles in quartz because 
uh, they are often, well, often relative to everything, to other inclusions in courts, but are uh, found as uh, like rutile in courts, epidote needles in courts, quite beautiful. Epidote is a, uh, belongs to the clinozoicite group, group. Um, and it was named in 1806 by Awi of Awi fame, or Aween fame. And uh, it's from the Greek word, where are you, Miss Penny? Um, by the way, Miss Penny, uh, our Greek expert that is in Canada, hopefully now dethawing. Um, named in 1806 by Awi from the Greek word epidosis for um, increase in allusion to the long side at the base of the prism of the crystal. And if you look at the bottom and look at the base as a crystal, you can see there is a long side. So that's kind of neat to see that. Now, here's the other thing I want to show you. Hmm, bless you. There's a true Gesundheit. Where's that noise coming from? Let me show you this. Okay, so Epidote is very Placroic, all right? So I wanted to look at these and try to find that Placroism. So I, hopefully I don't blind you. There's no water on that side, though. If you look at this from the end, look at the brown. Look at the brownish color. So the, it's so transparent that the light actually does travel through this. I, I did this at, uh, in the dark at home, uh, testing it out, but then I realized I didn't need to, to do it. I'm using my fingers to block out the rest of the light so it doesn't blind you. But, okay, you see that? You can see that that is a, um, a, a chocolate, a brownish color from the end, and look at how green it is they are, and let's look at it from the different angles as I turn it, you can see that they actually will go from an olive green, oh, there we go, Dave, let's do that, to more of, let me tilt that, wow, okay, so look at that green. Now that, that's a go gorgeous green. And as we turn it, well, look at that. That's not quite as gorgeous of a green. That's more of the olive green that you often expect epidote to look like, right? And let's turn it once again. And then look at that. Look at the um, loss of saturation of color. Ah, even better yet, Dave. Let's go back through these. You can see that color of the olive green. And then as we turn it into the next angle, you can see that um, we have a um, much prettier color green. And then back to the yellowish olive green. And then if we do it right down the C-axis of the crystal all the way, let's see if there we go, perfect, we can see that. It actually, the light's traveling all the way through. Dave is doing an amazing job and able to uh, show you that brownish. Look how brown that is. Well done, thank you, sir. All right, so there you have a lesson in what is considered very strong placroism in a crystal. And so these, a lot of people don't see that because they don't get to see a epidote crystal that clear, that clean, that you can shoot a light all the way down through the C axis. And, um, but we showed you right here. So, you know, this is when you're cutting epidote. <laughs> if you facet epidote, look at that, that's sitting, I think, right up on its end you could orient epidote, orientation of the epidote would become really important that it is sitting up on its side. I like to, to do weird things with crystals like that. Um, and uh, there we go, that one is too. Look at that, it's that nice um, other flat, thin uh, flat side that it's sitting up on. 
So anyway, if you were cutting epidote and had a stone large enough, you would be really chastised by your fellow gem cutters if you did not check for the direction of placroism and orient it so that the best color green was the side that was facing up. And as you can see, as these spin around, they're actually on two different um, particular angles because I can see two different color greens in them as they, uh, as they go by. So anyway, you can see how much fun I can have without ever even mounting these up uh, just by, from the gemological properties of them. And this is what I do at home. This, I get out all this stuff, I look at it, I, uh, and, and that's what you have to, that's what you can do. You don't have to make jewelry out of pieces. You don't have to um, do any more than get magnification or not, get a light or not, get a magnet or not. But the more of those simple little gadgets you have, the more fun you can have experimenting. And now that I said magnet, I'm curious. Now I'm curious. Is there any iron in? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, we'll have to look up epidote. Now, remember, here is the funny thing about magnetism and iron. Pyrite. Pyrite which is, by, especially by weight, only two elements, iron and sulfur. We know sulfur is not magnetic, right? Iron, pyrite, is not magnetic. Not magnetic. How can that possibly be? Well, I'm just going to tell you the simple answer uh, because I don't have time to tell you the big full answer. It is in the, the direction of the electrons, it, you know, or let's just say atoms. I, I, you know, I, we won't get into neutrons, protons, electrons, all the parts of an atom, but let's just say them. It is the direction of the atoms and the way they are lined up counteract with the way they are lined up in as it uh, in as a crystal counteract each other. So let's just put it that way. So it is off setting and in an amazing, unusual characteristic makes pyrite not magnetic, even with all that iron in it. So it's not foolproof that it is a test of iron, but if it reacts to a magnet, that is certainly information you can use in um, moving forward in identifying or also in um, marking off what something isn't. So there's, there's two ways to uh, deduce and get to an answer, and that is by discovering what it is and by discovering what it isn't. Okay. Price on these guys, only $48 for the pair, which is simply a giveaway, simply a giveaway. Um, because again, to try to find two other crystals, especially since you know so much about them now, and they pair up perfectly. I could have saved them for a neat, um, yeah, I gotta get together some stuff for, to do some wire wrapping. And those would have worked out well, but oh well, $48 if they don't sell, we're going to do something with them. Or you can have um, me make you up something with them uh, as, a, as a wire wrap piece. Like Miss Gabby, she was so patient, did. Um, <laughs> she only waited have to wait three years or so. Okay, uh, look at this. Look at these guys. I have... I have not offered a deal on a parcel of diamonds in a long time. And I know I have sold all those other parcels. I have a couple of you out there 
out of the 10,100 plus subscribers now. Also, Dave sent me another new stat. I'll have to actually go over and then, and then share it with all of you about the number of views in the last so many days. And it is phenomenal, phenomenal, the number of you out there that are tuning in and looking at this show. So join us, join in. Okay, I know that there are some of you out there that have bought up every single diamond parcel that has been usable because if you price diamonds, earth mine diamonds. Let's look at item number 1167824. Earth mine diamonds are going to be um, uh, <laughs> maybe a dinosaur one day. Maybe, maybe the dinosaur of, of them one day. Uh, if, if, and the lab stuff takes over, I don't know, I don't know. But if I was to have a diamond, it, you know me, it would have to be earth mined. And I put it that way uh, so it's easily understood exactly what it is. So let's look at these. And so the uh, cotton that they're against is just a little bit um, off-white, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty white. Actually, it's, 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 the top is a little different color than the bottom, you can see. And look at these diamonds. I don't really want to take them out because I have them so nicely <laughs> uh, put in there and that took a bit. But you can see the color and clarity. They are clean. Uh, that's one of those things that, you know, uh, there's some that are VS and some that are SI. All of them are eye clean. They range from 2.9 millimeters to 3.1. There's certainly, you can see the slight difference in sizes. Let me get my little pointer. So you can see that this looks like a bigger one and that looks like a smaller one. But most of them are easily matched or paired up or close enough if you wanted to do a channel set piece uh, also. And um, very clean. Like I said, there's uh, some with SI inclusions, but there's also some with, you know, that I could find no inclusions, but I just put VS uh, to be conservative. Um, that's a pretty parcel. It's amazing. They equal exactly one carat, eight stones. So that's an average of 12 and a half points each. Uh, so that would be the 3.1 would be in the 12 point range and the 2.9s, uh, you know, um, are 10 pointers or so. So uh, that would be the other end, end of the range. So this is a fantastic parcel for someone, especially since that size, once they go over an average of 10 points each, it, 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 uh, that's a tenth of a carat. That's a premium price point. Uh, Price on this entire parcel of one carat goods, seriously, at, at, a, um, at a dealer price, if I had to go buy those, they would be at least 700 to $800 a carat. Seven to $800 a carat. So we're looking at seven to $800. And that would be not a retail price. So you, you can understand why when you see a ring in this carat of diamonds, why it costs what it does, because the diamonds truly cost. Not what I'm going to price them to you for does not reflect, does not reflect the actual value. It's just that I have these and it's my way of giving you <laughs> an incredible deal and selling them because um, I guess I need the little bit of money more than I need uh, that parcel of diamonds. And I had saved them because I thought that they, they uh, came out of one piece, so they were um, matched for that. And, uh, but anyway, that, pro that, that project is not going to happen that, uh, for the, this, the, this one set of stones that I have. So let one of you take advantage of this diamond parcel. And I am offering that one carat parcel um, in stones that size for an incredible, incredible opportunity of only, um, wow, 
I, I <laughs> goodness, I could never replace them. But um, make it only two hundred and fifty-eight dollars. I say that with such reticence because I know how much it would cost me to replace those. Two hundred and fifty-eight dollars on those. But I don't want to have to show them again. If I'm going to show them, I want to sell them the first time around. And so those of you that have picked off those opportunities on the diamonds before, here is another one. Obviously, stones that size at that price, if they don't sell, I am not going to go lower. I just as soon keep them. Those are big stones uh, to offer like that. And they are really clean, it, it, you know, and really um, beautiful color. And I don't think I need to take them all out and go through that effort to, uh, for you to be able to see that. Item 116-8624. Look at this. Now, this is something you're a little bit more familiar with. And here is, again, I want, because I was um, lucky enough to get in on those Japanese rainbow garnets so long ago, uh, it's one of those things that I feel like I really need to share with all of you so that everybody can have a chance to get one. And this is another um, kind of grouping of crystals that you haven't seen. So I've offered some dodecahedrons. There are these crystal, little miniature crystal clusters, I uh, kind of call them. And they are stunning to look at because they have these multi-directional um, angles because you have uh, different crystals coming together or the way the faces are oriented. Okay, look at that. Look at that face. Beautiful purple. Look, let's see this, uh, go to another one here. Oh, if I can grab it up. Look at that blue. Maybe, oh, look at that, that's another one. Look at that blue and yellow on the one face. Look at that one right there. This is what really grabbed me about. I noticed this through the bag, all the, look at that. All, every, that every little face I saw had a, uh, look at that iridescence. Look at that one. And, Look at, look, at the, look at the orange at the bottom that just came up with the slight, sl ever so slightest, see, change in angle. Boom. I, that's what, you know, garnet, my birthstone. And this has to be at the top uh, along with the mantoid. But this is an andradite. The mantoid's an andradite. So still sticking with that family. I love it. Um, look at that face. The same face can have different colors depending on angle, and all of them can be different depending on what light, wavelength of light. Look at that color in there. Blue here. This, that's what marveled me about this, especially this one particular crystal. It was just illuminating. And Boy, you would have something special amongst all your rock friends. Or if you have already one or two or three or five, give them as a gift because uh, no one else is going to have anything. Look at that yellows and goldens in that. Look at that face. Ooh. And, you know, again, you, <laughs> you don't see the color until you see it, and then it can be electrifying. All right, so could you imagine the, uh, you can see that this was on a matrix face at some point, what it would have looked like to have an entire face of these guys. Um, uh, yeah, they were probably grabbing them as, as the uh, village elders came out beating, throwing sticks at them. Uh, more like calling the police and having them, people arrested. That's what they did. Yep. People went to jail digging those garnets. I think it'd almost be worth it as well. All right, here we go. I could look at that on the screen and um, for forever. Uh, price on 
this one. Um, here we go. A item for all budgets because I am making this only $38. So yes, I know that is a sale price, but uh, like I said, I want everyone to get in on it and I don't want to be said, well, I just couldn't afford them because at $38 to have something this, this uh, choice and rare is an opportunity that doesn't come along because go ahead and try to find what you get for that for $38 on uh, that place called the internet. Okay, now item number 1167924. Let me show you. This item I could have shown with the, the other diamonds a moment ago, but um, I wanted to let your eyes rest so that you could see these. These are going to be the smallest full cut diamonds you will have ever seen. And no, I am not getting them out. They would go everywhere. By way of full cut, I mean that these have Excuse the cat hair. Maybe I will take them out after you look at these for a moment. Hold on. Um, you know, I hope everyone's a pet lover because I had my loving kitty had to come see what Daddy Sean was doing and <laughs> tried to weave her way amongst all of the rock stuff. Anyway, let me take them out of here and put them in a non... Yeah, look at this. Okay, so I'm going to tap them out of here. All right, here's the thing. You see the weight and the number of them? 12 stones totaling four points. These are one third of a point. Not three points, not one point, but there are three. Come on, man. Come on. Three to a point. We Okay, you still don't like that way? Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, what, just put it right on the film? Okay. Okay, nope, not on there, okay. A white piece of paper? Okay, oh, that's, that, you're right, you're right. A white piece of paper, I have one right here. Okay, let's do that with a little ink behind it, but that's okay. Okay, this is a good way, I like it. Well, it's, it's as good as I can, it's, it's all I can do. Before I flip these, awesome, and send them across the planet. Okay. Did you like shave on top of them? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh or sneeze. I mean, it's still just as big as the diamond, though. <laughs> oh my God, you're killing me. He does have a nice, clean piece of paper here. Okay, so let's do this. Remember, this is a vaudeville act also, all right? So what you see is a little bit of all. Now, we started with 12 diamonds. We may be down to seven or eight. Tell me you don't see the difference. I do see the difference. You're welcome. It is a wonderful display, and now, you where did that go? Oh, there it goes. I'm gonna chase it. Okay, here's the thing. Do I have 12? Four? Yeah, I know. What were those? You know, I, you know, if I sneezed, these would all be gone. Okay, look, look at that. Look how big they are. There's eight. Now there's only ten. I'm already having. A, I'm losing money as we speak. Well, you have twelve stones in the graphic. How many are they supposed to be? Oh, I see ten. I, I, zoom out. No, how many were supposed to be in the parcel? Yeah, those two right there, are those little specks of things? What? Are those stones? No, they can't be stones. <laughs> these, stones. These, these, these little things right here. <laughs> There's ten stones, that's <laughs> Okay, let's get, okay, let's do this. And then Dave's going to do his magic. These are actually really white diamonds. I'm, I'm looking at my, um, my other... How many are supposed to be there? Twelve, twelve stones. Well, um, so, oh, really? yeah. Yeah, well. 
Well, I told you they'd go somewhere. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah, no, I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> we'll we'll uh we'll just reduce the price as we speak. Are you sure there's twelve? <laughs> because I don't see how you would have dropped it. You know? Check the back. <laughs> I predicted check it. Check the back, sorry. Check the back. Yeah, yeah. Just like at the cover. Oh no, that's just yeah. yeah. That's okay. They they get the, they'll get a discount. But that's what happens, and so that's why I tell people, okay, be careful to always, when you're opening diamond papers, and we weren't even doing diamond papers, because these little things can flip. You should have seen the time that I was having at home trying to even corral them. It's like trying to corral a uh, bunch of kittens. And uh, these, these, these diamonds this size are, imagine this, I have had to set diamonds this size. They, in a way, can be easier, not prong set, but just flush set, because all you have to do is mash the metal around them. <laughs> and I use that word pretty well as uh, what I do. And uh, you only have to get them to get underneath the edge of the gold, and it takes very little pressure to push over enough metal to uh, set them. Now, let me show you. These are, have as many facets on them as a regular size diamond. And that is, I find, absolutely incredible how they do that. How they do that. They, these measure 0.8 to 0.9 millimeters, not even one millimeter. And remember, a one point diamond is 1.3 millimeters, roughly. These are point eight to point nine millimeters. So you're talking about really, really small. And this is though what they do with the micro pave. These are the size they use for um, like the number on a watch dial uh, to, to uh, mark the number place. They're diamonds this small. But when they get this small, the price actually starts going back up. Oh, I found one, I think. Really? Yeah, unless he was a jumper already from this other batch. Uh, now, how many, five? 11, 11. we're one up, we, we ran him down, we caught him, he was a wow. jumper. He was on, running the, the escape route. And um, so when you have to cut them this small, there's so much time involved and so little return on th what you can charge for them that um, they have to go up on the price. So remember, there's 57 facets, 57 facets, the same number as on a regular full cut, what they call a full cut diamond. So these are really white in color. Uh, they wouldn't go through all this effort to cut a crummy diamond. So the clarity is, uh, you know, VS and the color GH and the price. Um, we'll make it 11 stones now. And I am going to drop that price from the whopping amount I was going to charge that was $15, we're going to make them only $14, make it third. no, no, $12, sale. 11 stones, a, you know, a dollar a piece. You know, at, to, for them to cut 57 facets on a diamond and, and to sell them for a dollar, you know, it had to be mined, it had to be sorted. How did they even find that little tiny piece of diamond rough? But I guarantee if I go out to Arkansas, I will find every single diamond that is even uh, within my eyesight. I have got eyes for diamond crystals, and I don't mean that lightly. I really, 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 really know. Um, I have bought and sold so many rough diamond crystals that I don't even have but maybe a couple few because everybody always wanted them, I sold them, but I have been selling diamond crystals for a long time from all kinds of countries. And um, I'm just 
really familiar with how they look. Um, we even, I told you the story uh, that we had that 150 carat piece of diamond rub. And e even though it was of industrial quality, it was still so large, it was very rare because of the size of it. And it was a, you know, kind of a grayish yellow and it was opaque, but it was a well-formed crystal. And um, it came across in an estate buy. We actually had to get it uh, legally papered through the Kimberly process, and we did that, and that wasn't inexpensive, that cost. But in the end, in the end, I, w uh, I was actually challenged on it. So my uh, business partner, um, the dealer that had it came through the office, and my business partner said, here, let me have it. I hadn't seen it. He did, and it was this big... Uh, diamond crystal. He goes, let me see, let me, and he was whispering, of course I didn't know, uh, he was whispering to the other guy, which I know, the dealer, and he goes, let me see if Sean knows what this is, because I'm, they always challenge me, let's see if Sean knows what this is, let's see if Sean knows what this is. So as uh, my partner tells a story to this, uh, ex-business partner, tells a story to this day, he goes, Sean, no more than turn the corner and as soon as he stepped within sight across the room, which was about 25 feet away, he immediately said with a lot of vigor, let me see that diamond. This is a story as my ex-business partner tells it. He goes, he knew it across the room immediately what it was. So that being said, I hope I get to Arkansas. I've got to find, I just want to find my own diamond. That's all. Just my own diamond, don't ask for much. Okay, so um, we have 11 stones, $12. Let me uh, take a moment so I can get those put up safely. I'll be right back. Check this out. I haven't offered one of these, because um, I had to swipe it from Raven's collection. She has a collection of skulls that would make a cemetery envious. Um, this is really neat because it's sodalite. Now, sodalite uh, is a feldspathoid. Um, so it, it's a really uh, interesting type of mineral. And this is from one of the most famous locations for sodalite, which is the Asu Farm in Bahia, Brazil. Now, what makes this particular skull really cool, I went to the closet. Oh yes, this was a closet piece. And lit it up, and this entire area fluoresces pink. Pink, which is really uh, cool. So remember, kind of in this family is the tenebrescent hackmanites. Uh, you have um, other associated uh, some calcites blend in. As you can see, there's a couple different um, colors of uh, minerals here. You see this cream versus this white. So you, you never know exactly what you can get in sodalite. Uh, it originally was discovered in Greenland, actually. In this particular piece, it, I thought it, I really liked it. The pink fluorescence was really, was, uh, was spot on and right on the nose for an excellent uh, fluorescent piece. Oh, okay, so price on it also you're gonna like. Here, look how big it is. Best just put it in the hand to give you a good idea. So it's a good size and it's a really uh, nice quality for, what, for the material. So $36, only $36. $36. Now remember, when, we, when, we, when I offer you something like this, what you're getting is not just this skull, even though you are. You're getting the fact that we picked, handpicked this skull, or many of them, from many others. In other words, we would have high graded it on the items that didn't come in in an estate. And since 
many people don't have skulls in their estates when we <laughs> would get them. You can pretty well be assured that any skulls you see, we got out in the marketplace or from another dealer in the marketplace that it didn't come in in with a bunch of box of rocks that was inherited by somebody. So if we get it out in the marketplace or from another dealer, we are going to make sure that there's something special about it or it's a better quality than anything else you'd find. That's what you're getting when you get pieces like that um, from, from us. Okay, now let's look at item number mm -hmm. 969-420. 969420. Uh, look at this. Apparently, my little squirrel, Raven, liked this piece because I found it. I mean, she might as well be putting, stuffing things, you know, in, in, the, in the folds of a curtain or something because she is a little pack rat and finds things and tucks them away. Well, she apparently, and she has really good taste uh, as far as uh, being able to pick really cool pieces. This is one of them. This is a Moroccan vanadinite crystal cluster on barite. And it is 70 grams. It is two and a half inches by one and a quarter inch. And it's from Mabladen district. M. Um, if you're writing down at home, M I B L A D E N, M I B L A D E N district where it is well known. Look at those for producing specimens like this. Look at this guy. So those blades that you see are barite blades. On top of them, everything that is sparkly is vanadinite. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And I love the symmetrical. Um, kind of uh, Christmas tree shape to the specimen. And I tried to see if it stood, would stand up on its own because I really, really would have liked it to, but it didn't quite do that, but uh, it, was, uh, it was wanting to. All right, so, <laughs> All, uh, beautiful piece. Here is also a discounted sale price on it, which is only $24. Only $24 on that guy. Okay, now, let me uh, be uh, moving along here. Let me show you, you know, I'll show this because it goes with the diamonds earlier. 112-9723, 112-9723. Here is the last and only parcel I have left of those diamond crystals. These are natural diamond crystals, and you might have remembered these from, I had blue ones also. Look at those. These have everything from mackles, and especially if you take pictures of them, everything is in here to teach you lessons on the shapes of diamonds when they are in crystalline form. So you have the bipyramidals, you have the triangular flat mackles, perfect Dave. Um, you have everything you want. These are natural crystals. This is crazy how they sort them out. There's 25 points in 60 to 65 stones. So guess what? That makes these also around um, a third of a, uh, about the same weight. Yeah, look at these. It is the only parcel of natural earth mind. These could become um, quite rare and hard to find one day. And if you want, again, a great gift to give to someone. Okay, like you see that reflective spot right on the top one? That diamond behind it, that looks like a perfect um, bipyramidal, you know, octahedron crystal. That, that's really clean. These are really cool. I love them. I think they are so neat to have for, because I can't afford the big ones, so uh, why not a collection of small diamond crystals? And I am going to make these, um, well, really inexpensive. What's the last price you have on those, Asif? Do you have a price? 
Wow. <laughs> only, uh, they were only $38 before. Let's do this. How would you like the entire collection? Uh, well, let's see, 60 to 65, let's do this. Um, $28, $28 for all of those. And I will regret that only because I love crystals. And even though as small as they are, they're still neat to have. And when you look at them with magnification, they, <laughs> they are a blast to look at. And very, uh, you, you learn a lot about diamond crystals. And actually, for any of you that are going out to the um, place I want to in Arkansas, the uh, only diamond mine in the country, then you need to know what a diamond crystal looks like. And this would be a good investment as to learning the, all the different forms they can be found in, and you can do that for only $28. That would otherwise cost quite a bit. Let's look at item number 116824. 116824. I have a beautiful specimen, actually, in this piece. This is a... Um, it's nothing fancy, but I tell you what, it is quite striking. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, perfect, right there. Look at the calcopyrite crystals. And you can tell calcopyrite when they like this because if you look at all these crystals and you do not see any that are square or cubic, then you know. But if you start seeing triangles like that, then you know that you, look at, see the triangles? Then it's a calcopyrite. And out of all these, you would think there'd be a cubic one if there's pyrite, but there's not. Okay, so they're situated on calcite. And then look at this. Look at the ring. Look at how it, it has filled this vein. All right, then look at the middle right there. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, as we come back away from this for a little, a little bit, you're going to be able to see the other side. So look at that. Isn't that neat? And wow, look at that. Now, I say that because if you wanted to, you could take a diamond saw, for those of you that have one, and if you actually sliced this, this up, can you imagine how beautiful the slice would be with this ring? Well, it's not exactly a ring, but with this um, form of calcopyrite going I know I was just I was just thinking about that the side profile I couldn't think of what it was but you're right it's a smurf it is it's a face with a hat I saw the face I couldn't figure out a smurf that is that is a smurf that is so cool um the center you see this little different color I know it's it, it does and then you have the middle there. Okay, let me, let me keep going. Okay, look at the bottom of this. Look at that form. Almost any direction, if you took a saw, you would cut slices that would have this ringed pattern in them, and I think they would be beautiful. It's not like you'd be destroying a, a real expensive specimen, so it would be acceptable because I've seen other really beautiful slices and slabs, and someone has to do it to, to be, you know, I'm sure other people to take away from something like this to create something beautiful like a slab. And hey, Charles, we haven't heard from you in a bit. You have the flat lap polisher. Uh, you could do that and then flat lap polish the pieces. That would be stunning, in, just in my opinion. You know, also, why? Because in the middle, you have fluorite. This is actually a light green. I don't know if you can see it, but put it under fluorescence and you would definitely be able to see it. So you have a fluorite center. There's a little bit bigger piece of the calco. Um, that, I'm not sure what it is, but it's something. I think it is maybe another crystal. But wow, here is a lot of fun. A barrel full of monkeys fun. <laughs> Boy, that does look uh, like that. Okay, and a 
price that is not a lot because I have it ready for only $18, $18. And that's why the other reason, uh, you could actually cut it through here, still have that as a specimen, and then be able to take slices off of that piece. I don't know, all kinds of fun you could have with it. But um, you don't never know until you take that gamble and take the saw to it. Okay, let's look at I have next item 116-8424, 116-8424, let me show you, yep, you hear some jingling and some jangling here going on, well, let me, let me clean that real quick, and since um, I am going to sit those out for just a moment as I uh, get into something you have not, I've not ever put together what you're getting ready to see, which um, if I can get into my uh, very secure packaging, then maybe I can show it to you. All right, so let's just do this. Let's just do this. Let's start off. Boom, look at that one, okay? That is how you can, it's something you can call rock crystal. Rock crystal is a definition of, of quartz that is of a higher quality than regular quartz. And that's, that's all rock crystal means. So yeah, by the definition of rock crystal, that is a rock crystal. Here is, that was daddy crystal. There's mama crystal. And some of these have irises, which really um, can make a piece. Uh, you know, they have entire worlds in them. And then look at this. I have two smaller with actual real, not just uh, gem tube stands, but these are real sphere stands. And um, look at these guys. Look at these guys. Okay, so for a set of four, a set of four spheres, all really nice. And here, if I do this, you can see. Hey, there's water in that one. There is water in them. You are correct. That one, yep. Oh, look at that. Did you just see that? Look, look, at look at that. See, we haven't even been trying to find the irises, but they are there. Look at that. Uh, that absolutely has water in it. And these guys, that is actually the uh, number one inclusion in uh, quartz is water. And I've got a little bit smaller stand, so when I have a moment, I'll see if I can't replace it. Oh, I see that, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. And squeeze the water out. And then here, this big one, though, is almost so clean, I don't know if we can even find anything but water in it. Um, that little... Uh, right through there beautiful piece anyway set of all four set of all four and that's when it's fun when you have enough to be able to create something with uh them in in a uh, decorative decorative fashion and hmm? <laughs> well why don't we uh tie them to you and find out if they float there also yeah you'll be the um most uh, expensively sunk person ever uh, $58 for the set of four. $58 for the set of four. And you can see there are four different sizes. How neat is that? Never done that before. Because um, I've never had four that I could uh, put together as a collection like that. Now, oh, here is, oh yes, 116, 76524. <laughs> 116-7524. This is, folks, this is a collection of a couple of items here. These. Hey, uh, give the number of those last, the yeah, yep. Yeah, the sphere number is 116-8424. Yep, $58 for the four with the stands. 
Okay, and now the number to this is 116-7524. 116-7524, okay. Now, what I'm getting ready to show you folks is a Sweetwater Mine Collection. A Sweetwater Mine Collection. Never have done this before. Let me show you. Okay, we're talking about Reynolds County, Missouri. And let me show you. Let me show you. Look at this, start off with that one. That is the classic bad boy calcopyrite on top of dolomite. On top of dolomite crystals, you can always kind of spot dolomite, most often they're rhombohedral in form. Um, and look at this, this is all the way around. All the way around. Um, there's something cool to look at. Crystallized all the way around. So there's a, a beautiful representation. Look at this. How about iridescent calcopyrite with one of the unusual and very desirable spherical uh, shape crystal, well, crystal balls, spherical shape to the calcopyrite. And you can see, look at all the other calco all in the little crevices. I am sure there's some other unusual minerals with this one as well. Um, but calco, you can tell the iridescence, just a nice natural and very desirable collectible piece from the Sweetwater Mine. But this, this might be the one that is very well known. Um, wow, look at that. Look at that. Now that is a dog tooth calcite. Look at the clarity to the crystal. And then there's iridescence as well. Let's see if the camera can pick up when I turn, uh, look, look at the beautiful etching. So when I turn this in just the right angle, we can often sit spot if we come in a little closer on this. Yep, there it is. You can start to see some of the iridescence right there. There is also gonna be iridescence on the surface and of, of the entire crystal. Yep. On the top. Yep, hold on, yep, right. Right up there. Yep. Hold on. It is really uh, flake. Okay, there's some right there. It's really flagrant when you see uh, no, stop, this. Right let me, let me, hold on, let me change the angle. Yeah, I know, because I saw it there, I saw it there before. Let me, hold on, let me d give this whole thing a spin. Because there was an entire face of a crystal that showed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, oh, 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 oh. hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep. Yep, right there, you're right. Right there on this, uh, this whole face. Yes. Yes. And that's all on the other side. See that? Oh. Wow. Okay. And wow, look at that. So look at this etching. That's actually a um, desirable See the fire effect. Right there? Look at that. Right by your thumb. Look inside. I look oh. Yeah. See I do. See I do. Right there. See at the bottom where your thumb is moving around yep. there and you see the glow. The glow is there, is, there is a glow. This is, this is such a transparent calcite. This is actually, they actually do that facet right. calcite. They, they actually do facet calcite and it, it is certainly facet grade quality. It's also a classic if you, uh, for the term dog tooth and why the scalenohedral crystals can, are called such. Look at, look at the iridescence down here. And I found, saw a lot of it in here. It just may be uh, actually a little too much. Here's, here's more down here. Uh, too much lighting. If I catch this, here, here's a whole face of it. So let me take this away. Um, and you're gonna find this at home and be able to see it a, in a lot better form. Then you're gonna say, oh, wow, I see all that iridescence now, because even the faces of the crystal have it going up. So this is a really neat collection if you wanna have a collection of uh, sweet water mine. Turn the turn signal on. Uh, there we go. 
Sweetwater, yeah, that might show it um, as it spins, actually. Uh, well, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is, for not a lot of money, just such a, a fantastic look for only all three, uh, the, everything you're seeing, including that very uh, valuable dog tooth cow site, is only $68. $68 for all three pieces. Um, a fantastic opportunity. Oh. I know, it, it, it's, it's really visible when you, when you see it. I'm gonna look for it on the other, let's see, as it comes back around. And the iridescence, so you, okay. Look at that. Oh, I did see the glow in the tip of that. Yep. Yep. Yes. All the way through. That's a. That's a. Uh, that's one that uh, is one to show off. Having that is one to show off for certain. Okay, now I am looking for a particular crystal I wanted to feature. Let me see if I can find them in time. Um, I still have that Spencer Idaho Opal. I'm surprised about that, but speaking of, let me show you. You can even see against the diamond paper the difference. Now, I did that on this so you could actually see diamonds are graded through their side to take away the brilliance. This has a um, polished girdle, which is the circumference that goes around the stone. That's an extra plus. Look at the color. This is a, um, in the world of diamonds, a very white diamond. Now, you can see against that super white paper, don't be fooled when people use a diamond paper paper. You think that that is white? Well, I think I just showed you that there's all kinds of different shades of white. That diamond looks whiter against that paper than what it would look against this paper, doesn't it? Of course. So if you're selling, you don't want to use that fancy white piece of paper I made. No, you want to work with the diamond paper. You think the diamond paper would be acceptable because it's made by the trade. It's a diamond paper. Look at the difference in the whites. And look at how you don't see the color. Yep. You don't see the color until you put it against a real white. Then you can see a little tint. You see a little shade of that color. That shade of color goes away against the same color that it is. Well, you should take lids with people when you buy diamonds. <laughs> That's right. Um, that's right. Don't be whitewashed. Um, all right. Look at the brilliance to this. This being a 48-point diamond that's just shy of a half carat would sell um, earth mined natural diamond probably $1,500 easily. Uh, you have SI2 clarity, so that's just the clarity above eye visible. That's where you get the most look for the money. It is. It, it, it is. It's a, uh, the proper diameter for the weight. It is an HI in color. So that is why you're seeing a little bit of a tint of color. If it was D or E, the color of the diamond would pretty much match the whiteness of the paper. But who walks around with a paper that white and going to put it behind their diamond to grade your, well, it's on your hand. It's just not practical. It's not, it's not even, this is in the color range. You, again, get the most look for the value. You put your jade clip and use that paper. I could put a jade clip and put that diamond in and display put the paper it. paper on there. No, put the paper on. You can't. Not the diamond. <laughs> it's one of the people who carry around the paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, new uses that for that clip. On in the same time you put a clip on. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> awesome, awesome. You're on a roll. Okay. 
I have this. Oh, all the little tiny diamonds. Yeah, yeah. Let's color grade them all. Um, here we go. How about this? I have it sale priced. It'll never be less than this price. And you know, for me to offer this price is crazy. Two hundred twenty-eight dollars. Two hundred and twenty-eight dollars. That is. Um, that's like uh, final price. Final price. Two hundred twenty-eight dollars. I'm sounding like a diamond tear, but um, w what a beautiful gem. That is truly a beautiful gem, and it's huge compared to what you just were looking at, of course. It's going to look huge. Look at this compared to the ruby, how I always use. All right, look at that. That would look beautiful. That would look beautiful. A big one like that on either side of that ruby. <laughs> no, no. then you're looking at the diamonds and not the ruby. But I'm just showing you compared to the diamond, compared to the ruby, that that is a big stone on the hand. And so, you know what? Earth mind is the way to go. And if when you can buy an earth mine diamond at a uh, lab grown price, then, uh, you know, that's to me, there's no, no choice of about which way to go. I'm a purist. I like the uh, the real stuff, and that is exactly what you're getting. Oh, as the clock and time is running out, hold on. There is a, you know how I have to, um, what, what is this? This is this, uh, blah, 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 blah. yep, have to end with a zeolite. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I have a zeolite for you, and it's a stunning one. This is item number, um, <laughs> item number 1153724, 1153724. Look at this. All right, so you can see by my hand how large this is. So this is a cabinet quality and size specimen. This is again from, from, <laughs> from the Malad Quarry, and it has so many goodies going for it. You have still by and apophyllite. So the still by are the are the cream color, and as we come in close and look at the apophyllites, you can see you have everything from these beautiful, large, nicely formed crystals to smaller ones dotting the still bites. Look at this. When you look, look close, you can really see the beautiful shape and form to the apophyllites. Look at that. These, look, look at the clarity to them. These are um, expensive. Specimens like this getting harder and harder to find. The Malad quarry ones are some of the most desirable ones there are. You have, look, look at the still bites you can really see the fan shape to them. And as I turn this around, you can see the basalt in the back. And then again, look at how beautiful those crystals are. It is a uh, really sharp looking specimen um, for display. And at the price it's going to go for, Look at the little crystal tucked back in there. Um, you're going to love it because I'm going to I'm going to sell price this, which I shouldn't do. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to knock I'm going to take off a, a a good a good bit. How about this? That one I showed last week was a really really good value. It was um, the way I had this one priced. This one I think should be priced a little bit less. So if we're going to compare both together, I'm going to make this one instead of the two hundred and forty-eight dollars, like I think the other one roughly was, going to drop it down to one hundred and eighty-eight. No, make it one seventy-eight. One hundred and seventy-eight dollars on that. One hundred and seventy-eight dollars. That's going to have to be the last item of the show. We'll be right back with trivia. <laughs> awesome said he already has that already. He's already bought that. I think that's where all of our spe my 4,000 specimens have gone. He's got them all. Okay, be right back. Okay, excellent. Oh my God, awesome. You're, you, are, you rock. I won't be but a minute. Petrified wood turkey. This is super, super, super old piece. It was old, old stock of mine. It is known as cola wood because it is petrified wood. Um, you can see it's from the Tokot mine. It was only open for one year in 2012 and 2013. And 
if you look, you can see right there, there is green stripes throughout this piece. Now, other pieces of this same type wood have more green than this. There are uh, several areas of green. That is chrysocolla, hence how it got its name, cola wood. That is the, uh, one of the rare, rare woods that has any kind of copper or other inclusions of, um, that turn anything green. There's green coming up here. This is a really unique and rare piece. I, I wanted to show that price is only $28. It is completely thick enough to cut extremely rare wood. And thank you, that way it completes. Um, it makes me feel so much better to get something in front of you that is that unique and rare. It was sitting here, I had scanned it, but we were uh, had so much going on we didn't get to show it. Okay, let's get to the two. Um, one of them would have been about that piece of wood, so you're lucky, because I would have asked something tricky about that uh, piece of petrified wood. Instead, two easy questions for you. Questions number one, name two crystal forms mentioned now remember, the way I word the questions are important. Name two crystal forms mentioned that diamond crystals are found as. So, you know that little parcel of diamond crystals I featured, the really, really little ones? But under enough magnification, they looked exactly like the big ones would. In that parcel, most of the shapes were of one shape, I mentioned, or the other shape. I mentioned. What were those two shapes? Question number two. What is the name given to a gem or crystal that changes color in three or more directions when viewed from those directions? So name a gem or a crystal given to a, uh, what is the name given to a gem or crystal that changes color when it is turned in three or more different directions. What is the name given to that type of property or that type of uh, characteristic to a gem? A very specific name. I mentioned it and you'll remember it. Okay, that was it. Okay, have um, many, many other things. I um, have many, many other things that I can't wait to show you in the shows coming up. So watch everyone. And now that I know there's such a thing as subscribers, do subscribe to the show. Oh yeah, I'm gonna sound like all the rest of the hawkers out there. Give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the show, leave your comments. And as you can see, if you have requests, make a request in the comments, play the trivia if uh, you want. If you don't, leave a comment anyway. We love to hear from you. Also, if you want to take it a notch higher, go to gemshopping.com, uh, gemshopping.com, and you, which, you know, I'm in the lower floor in a custom little uh, studio set up specifically just for this podcast with just the, the, the hand picked, and of course, the director of production. Can't get any better than that um, to run the whole thing. Go to gemshopping.com, go to their website, go to the live show 24 seven, and you will see some of the most amazing jewelry and gems set up in some of the finest items and estate items and every different color, including a red diamond that was sold here the other week you can see right here at Gem Shopping Network and every other gemstone imaginable as well. I just get to show you anything I want as well, but also what the items look like coming from the ground up. All right, love all of you, appreciate all of you so very much for supporting this show for seven years now. And hopefully I'll, and my um, cohorts will be here for many, many more years and um, you know, I'm working on, uh, I thought I was working on getting uh, to be like that picture because that picture we showed you, surrounded, that gentleman surrounded by rocks, that's living it up. But I didn't want them filling my grave with all those beautiful items because they didn't know what to do with them. So after selling 4,500 items now, I still look just like 
that guy. Miss Gabby had it right. And, um, and I couldn't be happier. And luckily, Raven, she may be even a little worse than I. Because she doesn't want to sell any of it. So, God bless. See you next Monday. Cheers.